Hey guys, I'm back with another video, and this is a really cool mnemonic for AML, acute myelocytic leukemia. So let's just jump right into this. Here's acute myelocytic leukemia at the top, AML, and its most common subtype. So there's different classifications of AML, the most common being acute promyelocytic leukemia. That's the most common form of AML, and it takes and it happens because of a translocation of chromosome 15, 17. So 17 will then be translocated, a piece of 17 to go into 15. And this ends up um, altering or making it defective, the retinoic acid receptor. And when this is defective, of course, the treatment then would be to give vitamin A, a vitamin A derivative or an analog. And that is called all trans retinoic acid. It's another word, just basically a fancy way of saying it's a vitamin A derivative. Okay, so that's all the stuff that you kind of have to remember in relation to a acute promyelocytic leukemia on top of knowing some of the basic features of all AMLs. So with all AMLs, when you take the word AML, you see the A and the M at the beginning. The A can stand for our rods and the M can stand for, oops, sorry about that, the M can stand for MPO positivity. So our rods is just when you look at the myeloblast cell, here's the nucleus, you'll see these little rods. Sometimes there'll be one, sometimes there'll be a bunch of them in the myeloblast. So we know in AML there's an increased level of the premature myeloblast cells. And if you have greater than 20% uh, myeloblast in your bone marrow when you do, or when you do a blood testing for it, when you have greater than 20% uh, myeloblast, you are classified as having AML, specifically with myeloblast. Okay, and we know when you look at AML, it tells you the A for our rods and the M for MPO positivity. And also remember that MPO stands for myeloperoxidase, myeloperoxidase, and myeloperoxidase is just an enzyme that's found in really high levels in myeloblast and neutrophils and it's used to break down microbials. So neutrophils use it to break down like pathogens and stuff like that. Okay, so you, because it's found in really high levels in neutrophils and in myeloblasts, which is a precursor cell leading to a neutrophil, you can then do a min, uh, immunohistochemistry testing. And if a cell, if, if the testing, if in the test you get that it's positive for MPO, then that is for AML. So. The two kind of most important things would be our rods and MPO positivity in AML and all of its classifications, whether it be APML or acute megakaryocytic, uh, megakaryoblastic leukemia, etc., monoblastic. There's all these different types. But like I said before, APML is the most common uh, subtype of AML, and that's with a translocation of 15 and 17. Okay, so I'm sure you've heard all of this stuff before, and you're trying to find a really cool way to remember everything, and here it is. A Protestant named Martin Luther started the Reformation in 1517. So I just want to remind you, to begin, you should be able to remember AML because it starts with an A and an M. We have our rods, remember, which are the little rods that are in the uh, myeloblast, and you have MPO positive. So those two things are out of the way. That's in all forms of AML. And then we use this mnemonic because this is what they always like to ask about. So in other words, what's the most common way that you would get AML? Well, it's, it's from acute promyelocytic leukemia. And I said it was a translocation of 15, 17. And I also said that that causes a defective retinoic receptor, remember? Retinoic acid receptor. And the treatment for that is, of course, all trans retinoic acid, which is a vitamin A uh, derivative. Because they could ask it on a test either way. They could give you all trans retinoic acid, or they can give you uh, vitamin A. So you have to know it's a vitamin A derivative. Okay, so the way we remember all the rest of this complex information and how APML will present is using this. So A, just look at the word APML. A, pro, a for A, and then P for Protestant. And ML stands for Martin Luther. So a Protestant named Martin Luther, so a Protestant named Martin Luther, started the Reformation in 1517. So if you know a little bit about theology and a little bit about history, you know that Martin Luther started, so not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther. Martin Luther started the Protestant Reformation. What does that mean? Well, 
before Protestants were around, Protestants is basically a large cluster of a ton of different denominations in the Christian religion, but before all of these different denominations in Christianity were around, you had just pretty much, it was controlled by the Roman Catholic Church. Pretty much all the Christians were Roman Catholic for the most part. And then Martin Luther led the revolt because he didn't agree with some of the things that the Roman Catholic Church was doing. And he started a reformation or reforming or changing where he went against the Roman Catholic Church and that's where the Lutheran religion came from. So, what is the exact date that that started? It started in 1517 and it went on for some time after that. And then the Lutheran Church came up from that. So, look at the translocation. It's a translocation of 1517. How you can remember retinoic acid receptors, I think that's messed up because it was a reformation. Reformation sounds like retinoic, reformation for retinoic. And then that should remember, all you have to really remember then is that retinoic, it is a vitamin A derivative to treat this all trans retinoic acid. So let's go over it again. AML, you look at the word AML, acute myeloid leukemia. You know the A stands for our rods right here. The M stands for MPO positivity, remember, and that's the enzyme that's in high concentrations in neutrophils and in the myeloblast, and that's to break down the microbes that the neutrophils will eventually have to break down various pathogens and stuff invading the body. So those are the two important things to know. That'll tell you, okay, we're dealing with a AML. And then when you look at APML, acute promyelocytic leukemia, they often will ask you in a question, well, what's the, com most com what's the most common way to get AML? And that is the subtype acute promyelocytic leukemia, which is a translocation of 1517. How do you remember that? Just look at the word. A Protestant named Martin Luther. And then you know that Martin Luther did the Reformation. And then you can look at it in any resource. You'll see it happened in 1517, a translocation of 1517 which alters the retinoic acid receptor. How do we know that? Because the word reformation. It was a reformation against the Roman Catholic Church. So this is just kind of a simple little mnemonic to help you remember. I also want to say one more thing because I'm sure I'll get comments in the uh, under the video of people saying, well, it's not always uh, MPO positive. You can have MPO negative, and that's true. The time where you'll, you'll have an MPO negative AML will be in acute megakaryoblastic. Acute megakaryoblastic, okay? So that's the one exception in this. And another little thing to note also that's kind of important is a form of AML. It's called acute monoblastic. Acute monoblastic leukemia. So this is monoblast. You know, like monoblast, that's the precursor cell before you get to uh, a monocyte. And then a monocyte is a precursor cell leading to macrophages, okay? So in acute monoblastic leukemia, you have increased monoblast. And in this particular type of leukemia, there's a very common presentation of it infiltrating the gums. Infiltrating the gums. You could say the gums or the mouth. Sometimes you'll see it just in general. It'll say like the oral cavity, but specifically the gums. And the way I remember that is because acute mono. You know, like mono is that is the kissing disease, and it evolves, obviously, two people kissing. So that helps me remember, okay, that's infiltrating the mouth or the gums. So I hope this helps. Um, this helped me a lot to break down, kind of differentiate AML and acute and APML from all of the other uh, leukemias. And I'll try to make some uh, videos on other leukemias and some of the mnemonics I use specifically for, like, chronic myeloid leukemia, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and et cetera. All right, guys, I'll see you in another video. See ya.